you know, you can't just have editors on the top earning good salaries and very young, inexperienced, sometimes untrained journalists at the bottom who are also struggling with all the demands on them to do social media, to be on call 24-7. It's just too much pressure. It's more to get the big ticks to pay back their fair compensation to what is owed to South African media. So this whole thing has been happening for a good 20 years, like almost like, you know, a rug from under our feet without us even noticing that all the revenues in this country has just gone to the big ticks and people like Elon Musk, um, Mark Zuckerberg, etc., have been reaping all these profits. And there's, we need to regulate big tech. And the whole issue right now is who governs this? Should it be government? Then we're also in trouble. Should it be the media houses? But the SANEV has done rep representation to the Competition Commission with the Department of Trade and Industry to say, we need to call all these people to the country to give us their case on how they can um, recompensate for the losses and to ensure that we have thriving newsrooms again. They, you know, they need to pay for news that goes onto their platforms. So you can't just have news everywhere and then they denying that they news people. They are saying, we are just digital, social. But in fact, um, as I was saying, you know, um, my students are saying they're getting their news, news from Instagram and YouTube. And who's to verify whether they, this is all nonsense or, you know, within the nonsense, the big nonsense, there's some truth and there's nonsense. And so, it's quite a mess actually. But that's the one thing, a fair compensation from the global technology companies and of which there are many. Elon Musk or Twitter X was the only one who didn't agree to come to South Africa. The rest of those big techs said they would and whatever. Um, that's the one thing. And then government also needs to advertise in different newspapers and that's been dwindling over the years. Um, and the media companies need to not see cuts, layoffs and cuts and redundancies and retrenchments, whatever you want to call them, as the first port of call. They quickly go into the newsroom and they've gotten rid of a very important middle layer, the boots on the ground, if you will, of expertise and sub-editors. So, you know, you can't just have editors on the top earning good salaries and very young, inexperienced, sometimes untrained journalists at the bottom who are also struggling with all the demands on them to do social media, to be on call 24-7. It's just too much pressure. So, you know, used to have something like Beats and have mentors in newsrooms, and those things are basically gone, unfortunately. The actual training, in-house training, um, or, you know, where a media company um, would actually have downstairs, there's a whole training room of 20 people, and then you go upstairs and you're in the newsroom, and you have a mentor there for the rest of the year. Um, you know, I don't know if in your situation you had that, because, it was in the last 10 years, but certainly 20, 30 years ago, that's how it was. And you can't just expect somebody to know everything. And people have to read, of course, and, you know, investigate. And when they ask the wrong questions, they get criticized. But I mean, I, I also think it's, um, it's really serious that beats have depleted. You know, now we're sort of sitting with political and some business. Yeah, quite a lot of business, political, business and sport. Now there used to be labor, and there used to be education and the books page and theater and culture. And wow, there, was a, there were a lot of beats, you know. Um, in fact, there was a soccer beat and a cricket beat and a rugby beat. Now there's like a sports beat and one sports journalist has to go around covering soccer and everything else. 
I, I, I really find that really sad that, in fact, newsrooms don't have the specialist beat reporter things anymore.